This is World Business Report from the BBC World Service. I'm Rob Young. Hello, welcome to the show. As many clothing stores reopen, we'll hear why many of the factories that make our garments are not yet seeing a boost in their orders. Exporters in Bangladesh tell us they fear up to one million jobs could go if the industry doesn't return to normal soon. Also this half hour, the challenges of working on board a passenger aeroplane in the era of coronavirus. And the slow resumption of live sport continues with the first British horse race for nearly three months. It's a relief to be back racing. We're obviously very excited and pleased about that, but in, in very much a respectful way. We'll head to the race course to hear why the sport is not quite the same as you may remember. If you'd like to comment on any of the stories that we're covering today, then we'd love to hear from you. You can tweet me. I'm at Rob Young UK. Shops selling clothes have started reopening in Europe and the United States. That will no doubt come as a relief to many people keen to ditch their lockdown look in favour of something new. The discount chain Primark is now trading from more than 100 stores across Europe and the United States and is planning to open all of its 150 outlets in England in a fortnight. The company said today it has placed hundreds of millions of dollars worth of orders for new stock from suppliers. Such news will be welcomed by garment manufacturers. Factories were hit incredibly hard by the measures to suppress the spread of coronavirus in rich nations. As stores shut, sales of clothes plummeted. Orders were cancelled. Some factory workers went unpaid. <laughs> That's a protest by workers in Bangladesh last month demanding their unpaid salaries. About four million Bangladeshis, mainly women, work in the country's garment factories. It's unclear how many jobs and indeed how much of the industry will continue after the pandemic. Rubana Huck is the president of the Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association and described the damage the industry has sustained. We are seeing random closure of factories. We do foresee considerable loss in workers, employment. Up to half a million to a million workers can easily be impacted because there's literally 50% business not showing up in our radar. One million jobs could go in the sector. That is an awful lot of workers. That is about a quarter of the garment manufacturing workforce in the country. Correct. That is a devastating blow to the industry, surely. Uh, this is a blow that we probably won't be able to handle very well because we are dependent on uh, ready-made garment industries export. Um, last year, from January to April, we had uh, exported around $11 billion. And this year, in four months, we've just uh, exported $7 billion. So it's a considerable dip from 11 billion to 7 billion. Uh, the entire economy depends on, on ready-made garment industry. And it's, it's not just the entrepreneurs, it's more the workers. Because these workers are used to a certain degree of freedom, mostly women. It can easily tip the social balance. How would you characterize the treatment that you've received from the international brands? Initial reaction from all the, most of the brands, I shouldn't say all, but most of the brands was, um, sorry, we are facing a forced major situation and uh, we have uh, nothing to do. We are undone and we are canceling everything, including what's been shipped, what's on hold, what's ready and what's uncut. So, you know, we've had that reaction. And then immediately when we went back to the buyers and said that, look, guys, you can't do it to us, then they started negotiating and engaging with us. I think COVID automatically, you know, took everyone by surprise. And all, all of us saw was just pure and simple uncertainty. And I don't blame the brands for that, for the initial reaction. But what followed later on was pretty disappointing because most of the buyers came back and said okay uh, so we're going to accept the goods at the port but we don't know when we'll be paying for that so the deferment of payment terms it was almost an obvious proposal from at least 80 percent of the brands so that put a lot of us in, in jeopardy because our banks just debit our accounts and pay our our suppliers for the raw material that they have shipped to us so uh, automatic liability and a forced loan account is created against our, our accounts while you know we are not paid by the ultimate customer. So it's created a lot of confusion. And then the third reaction that the customers had was 
that you know we don't know when we'll be able to take the uncut goods because you've missed the season so we'll take it next year so we have a lot of requests from a lot of brands saying sorry we won't be able to take it because there's no season to take them so we've sort of been sandwiched by a lot of demands from a lot of different places we literally paid our workers in april and part of may almost over 529 million dollars uh, just even for not working because we we couldn't retrench them because uh, there was eid the festivity the muslim festival there and it, it just appeared that it would be inhuman but you know this is all non productive wage and the industry will take almost 14 months of full production to pay this back because this is all uh, from our own pocket at the same time you know the government has given us a loan package which is not enough for us to cover everything and that's only for the workers salary payment workers have been protesting saying that uh, they have not been paid their wages for a number of weeks can you guarantee that everybody who is owed money will get it i don't blame the workers for this but you know i blame our inability to be negotiating with the buyers properly for for immediate payment because where is the money going to come from we get paid by the brands and then we pay the workers it's not as if we pay from uh, our, our bank accounts uh, from our from our money which is hidden or stashed away somewhere it's a rolling business and big businesses in in your part of the world have been closing down declaring furloughs no work no pay we don't have options like that in our country we have very strong labor laws so even if we can't pay we still have to pay so all of us are now incurring huge debts and appealing to the banks and the government and and yet we have to pay them all back in the next 24 months which is a huge burden on the manufacturers Rubana Huck there from the Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association.